What is going on guys? Sticks here with the Token Minorities bringing you part one of a three-part series that I am doing and uh, I mean it could be definitely more than three parts but it is just going to be three parts for the time being as all of the other stuff that I have done uh, in sequence has usually been in three parts and this is going to be the many types of Silvali GX where I take a look at the at different styles of Silvali and different types that run Silvali GX in the deck and just play them, see how they work, and see what different types of decks Silvali can build. Now, I'm only uh, doing three. There are definitely more, and I actually have more than three. I probably plan to do a part two of this later. Well, not part two. I plan to do a second set of three videos at some point in the future, but for the time being, this is just going to be a set of three videos where we explore three different types of Silvali GX, and obviously this first video is going to be Silvali Metal, the most straightforward and the one that I believe that has seen the most success in the competitive uh, in the competitive scene. And before I get into the deck, just a reminder that if you guys like this video or found it helpful, please leave a like, drop a comment, click that subscribe button. Helps us out a ton. And let's do more cool stuff for you guys. And if you guys are new to the channel, please feel free to check out our Discord. The link will be in the description below. We don't just talk about TCG here at the Token Minorities. We are a collaborative channel where we also have draft format. Uh, we have a quote-unquote fake news among the draft format scene uh, show, which is pretty funny. And occasionally, if Maddie or Abe feel like it, we will have some smoke on content. And our uh, channels on our Discord reflect such. So yeah, feel free to check that out. Uh, the link, like I said, is in the description below. And before I get into the deck, the question of the day. I'm just going to go fairy, verily, yeah, verily, wow, verily or fairy. Uh, I'm going to go fairly straightforward with my question of the day and just say, what is your favorite Silvali type? Now, I'm going to word it very ambiguously like that because this can mean not only what is your favorite type of Silvali to run in the TCG, it can also be what is your favorite type of Silvali in the video game. Now, I'm actually just going to answer what my favorite type of Silvali is in the video game because, I mean, I've been playing a bunch of different Silvali decks, just trying them out, seeing which ones I would want to make my video about. And so, I mean, I've come to like quite a few of them, so I can't pick my favorite in the TCG, but in the video game, I would have to say that probably my favorite Silvali is either Silvali Steel or Silvali Ghost, just because those two typings, given Silvali's tool set and what it has to work with, seem to be the most effective Silvali's competitively, like either being immune to certain stuff or being a steel type that can defog, a ghost type that can defog, and then also having momentum and parting shot. It just seems that Silvali's moveset most lends itself to having the most success with those typings. However, there are definitely other Silvali types that can work very well. I mean, the normal one can actually carry Z crystals. I really wish Silvali would get it's typing based on a Z crystal, but unfortunately it does not. So, I mean, Silvali Normal's good, Silvali Poison definitely has niches, but uh, I still have a soft spot in my heart for Silvali Ghost and Silvali Steel as my two favorite Silvali types. So what is your favorite Silvali type? This can be uh, in the TCG, like I'm running right now. Like, what is your favorite uh, Silvali deck? Like, what is your favorite type of deck to run around Silvali? Or just what is your favorite Silvali type? Uh, TCG or in the video game and why let me know in the comment section down below I'd love to hear your guys's thoughts, but anyway on to the deck like I said This is going to be a deck centered around Silvali GX and different metal Pokemon Namely Celesteela GX just being super bulky power this thing up just take hits KO stuff and then we also have techs like Cartana GX and Registeel to deal with whatever our opponent might try to throw at us. So this is a very, very cool deck. Um, I've had this just kind of sitting around for a while. I ended up uh, teching it out a little bit, so I'm not sure where this came from originally, but I do know that it was just in my deck builder, and I decided to update it for Ultra Prism, which is why I have a couple of the cards, obviously, from Ultra Prism in there. So obviously it is around Silvali GX, Gyro Unit, your basic Pokemon, have in play, have no retreat cost, Turbo Drive, 
three of any energy does 120 and you attach a basic energy from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon. So hitting for 120 is actually pretty solid because it two hit KOs pretty much everything in the game. And then if you have certain drives on it hitting for weakness, you'll be able to Oko a bunch of stuff. And then also Rebel GX can hit for a ton of damage. Again, that three energy cost, which isn't bad at all and is very easily achieved does 50 damage for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So if your opponent fills up a bench, you're suddenly hitting for 250 damage. And Silvali, I mean, it can hit pretty hard, it can take two hit KOs, but it also supports the other Mons very well in accelerating energy and giving your basic Pokemon free retreat, which is what I'm going to try to exploit the most. So I mean, it's a very straightforward deck, just power up, our attackers, namely Celesteela, with Silvali, take a couple KOs all the way and then try to ride Celesteela to the victory or Silvali if that's the route you decide to go. I'm just going to go uh, through the Pokemon from, well, from the start. We have one Oranguru. Oranguru over Octillery because bench, uh, basic Pokemon, not bench Pokemon, but I guess bench Pokemon do technically as well, but basic Pokemon have no retreat cost. Octillery would have retreat cost, so with just having Silvali in play, Oranguru suddenly can retreat for free, so it is much, much better than Octillery in that one, don't have to dedicate as much deck space to it, and two, it will have the free retreat and can also attack for three energy with Psychic if you need it to. Then we are running 3-3 of Type Null and Silvali, just because I mean that they're very, very important to the deck. They are what the whole deck is going to be centered around. So we want to have a good enough number of them in order to play them and have them consistently when we want them. But at the same time, we don't need a 4-4 because if your opponent knocks out your Silvali GX, you pretty much, or if your opponent knocks out three Silvali GXs, you do lose the game. So there is that. And then as for the other attackers in this deck. We have two Celesteela as the main other attacker with Rocket Fall for a metal and two energy. Does 30 plus 30 for each uh, of your opponent's retreat cost or each, each colorless energy in your opponent's retreat cost. Can do pretty solid damage against certain Pokemon, but Moon Press, even though it's four energy for 130, which normally is like, uh, that's, that's a really ugly attack cost, which it is because you can't just throw two DCEs on it. Uh, it has to be two metals and a DCE or just something along those lines. Still doing 130 with being a huge bulky behemoth that Celesteela is, 130 is enough to two hit KO everything. So that is that is plenty. I mean, it's not amazing, but it is definitely enough. And then Blaster GX for the same cost as Moon Press, you're able to hit for 180 damage. And then it's basically a town map where you turn all your prizes over. So there's definitely competition for the GX attack in this deck is Kartana has one that you, you just take a prize, which can be amazing if your opponent tries to make you play the odd prize game against decks like, say, Metagross or something to that effect where they rely on you knocking out one small Pokemon, but then they just have a bunch of big, bulky GXs that you have to go through. Kartana can ease the ease our way of getting through those particular matchups. So, I mean, it's really just a matter of what you're up against. If you want uh, to look at your prizes, if you have a big attack that you need to go for, Blaster GX is the way to go. If you just want to take a prize to make the prize numbers better, then Kartana is the way to go. Or if you just want to take a big old knockout, like on something that has 250 HP, then Silvali is the way to go. So definitely have to play carefully around what you ultimately determine you, you want your GX attack to be. And speaking of Kartana, we are running a single copy of that with the slice off ability. When you play this from your hand onto your bench, you may discard a special energy attached to one of your opponent's Pokemon. We're really never going to be attacking with Kartana, except when, except like a late game blade GX is really the only situation that I can see us wanting to play down and attack with Kartana. So other than that, really not seeing where we would actually want to truly play it down. We're really just going for, uh, or not play it down, but where I would want to attack with it. I'm really just going for the ability to discard uh, a special energy off of our opponent's Pokemon. Can be devastating and can give us that extra turn that we need. And then two Registeel to be able to accelerate energy just for a single energy. If Turbo Arm does the same thing as Turbo Drive from Silvali, except it is just 
90 less damage and only one attack cost and I mean it still is just basic energy so that is very nice as well and then finally three Lele in order to maximize our chances of getting a turn one Lele into Bridget or just getting a supporter when we need it so now I'm going to speed up because I've been talking for way too long already sorry about that we have two field blower because this deck is very reliant on abilities so we want to be able to uh, turn off Garbotoxin whenever we need to and also choice bands can be very annoying as most of our attackers are GX's so that is going to add up to some extra damage that is very unfortunate for us. For Max Elixir is another way of accelerating energy. With Max Elixir plus Silvali, it's actually really really easy to get Celesteela set up even within just a couple turns. One Rescue Stretcher as our method of recursion as we do like having energy in the discard pile for both Silvali and Registeel. For Ultra Ball to guarantee to get what we want when we want. And then for the supporters, um, Still haven't figured out what line exactly I want of these supporters, but for now, a 3-3-2. I would like to run like a 4-4-3, but unfortunately this deck really just didn't have the room for it as I wanted to run a good amount of drives as well as four max elixirs. So 3-3-2 still gives me plenty of draw support. One Bridget, like to have two, but again, not quite enough room. And then three Guzma just to be able to bring stuff out. I mean, we actually don't mind the switching effect of Guzma because Silvali does give our uh, basic Pokemon the ability to free retreat. Three choice bands to be able to hit harder. And then as for the drives, um, I'm probably running a little bit too many and this is where Silvali gets tricky because I mean it has a drive for almost any given matchup it's just a matter of getting to that and making sure you have the right number to where you don't put yourself at a disadvantage against other decks while still letting you draw into that when you want to so I'm running two fighting two psychic and one fire just because I mean Buzzwool I have seen everywhere so psychic uh, Zoroark is everywhere because it's Zoroark so the fighting and then fire is for like the Leafeons that have been starting to pop up and then and also like Metagross, other metal decks that we might run up against just give us the ability to hit those for super effective damage. So I mean that's the line I've been going with and it actually seems to work out pretty well so I'm sticking with it. And then for the energy, running very heavy energy uh, for DCE just because everything in this deck functions off DCE except for Registeel. And then 10 metal energy so that statistically speaking we can hit Max Elixir when we play it. So yeah, been talking for way too long. Let's just go ahead and see this deck in action. Already we have found one against uh, Kylo L. Kylo? Ky Kyle? I, I don't even. Uh, Kyle Darkheart. There we go. I was thinking like Kylo, like Kylo Ren. Uh, Kyle Darkheart with looks like a Gardevoir deck, which would be very, very, very beneficial for us if that happened to be the case. And what would be more beneficial is if I drew into a basic Pokemon so that I'd be able to start. But I mean, you know what? You can't always can't always get what you want so I mean we start off with nothing so far I mean I still have to wait and see what else I can draw into um and we start with the Celesteela okay so this hand actually is not bad this hand isn't bad at all what I'll be able to do is Ultra Ball throw a metal in the discard pile get rid of a field blower and potentially get a type null up immediately or a Registeel or really whatever I want to get going depending on what my opponent has and I even get a Silvali, so what I think I'm going to do, actually, Ultra Ball, get rid of the Metal and the Field Blower to grab a Lele, make sure Bridget is there, so that I can Lele into a Registeel and a Type Null. Uh, I really don't, especially considering I have the Silvali in my hand, I have no need to play things out, or I have no need... Uh, to get rid of my hand and plus I mean I'll have an attachment for the turn anyway so it really really just ends up being more beneficial to me so let's go ahead and grab a Registeel type null do I want to grab another one I might want two type nulls in this yeah let's go ahead and do that that way I can keep the Kartana uh, that way I'm still able to play down down the Kartana later unfortunately whiff on the max elixir that's fine I'll just attach the energy to the it's attached to the Celesteela, because if I draw into a Metal Energy, I'll be able to attach to Registeel, and then with Silvali, I'll be able to have the Free Retreat. And if I get a DCE and not a Metal Energy, I can still at least attack with my Celesteela. So he does attach to Ralt, and then he ends me. That stinks a little bit, but I mean, at the same time, I get six cards, so odds are I should be able to draw into a Silvali, and I actually literally just get a better version of what my hand would have been anyway. So this works perfectly. I mean, I get my... Uh, Cynthia and my Silvali, but I also get energy, I also get attachments, so let's go ahead and max elixir. I hit that so I can use my attachment for the turn on a DCE as well. Let's put that onto 
Do I want to put it on Type Null or Celesteela? Okay, so Ralts is going to be knocked out by my Registeel. So I think I'm just going to set up a little bit better with my Silvalia. I can always just attach the energy from uh, Registeel to the Celesteela anyway so that, it ready, so that it's ready to attack. I get another Silvali. So I even get two of those down as well. So what I'm going to do, just retreat into the Registeel, knock out the Ralts while accelerating energy. And I don't even have to go into uh, Silvali in order to accelerate energy. I'm able to get the Celesteela powered up. And now with the DCE in my hand, I'll be able to just simply play that onto Celesteela next turn and take one-hit knockouts on whatever he's able to bring up. Even Gardevoir GX, uh, even though he can't play it, there's no way that he can get it. Gardevoir GX will be knocked out. So let's go ahead and attach the DCE to the Celesteela and then N. Might as well end now while I'll still get uh, five cards off of it instead of three. And this is... This works out perfect for me. So I can even... If I want to go for the GX attack with my Celesteela, I can um, to get my prizes face up. But I think the better play is just to Moon Press and knock... Well, okay. So the better play, I thought, was to just Moon Press, save my GX attack for later. As I would be playing, it seems like I would be playing an odd prize game. I can always just attach that energy to Kartana and take my last prize in that situation. So, I mean, while playing with my prizes face up would have made it a lot nicer. I really didn't see anything uh, that was... I didn't see anything that would have been in my prizes that I would, uh, like, guarantee want to grab. So I decided that saving it for just taking a prize with Kartana later would probably be the better idea. But either way, we are able to take that one relatively quickly. Just got set up too fast and was hitting for weakness, so that's, that's always nice. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and try to find another one. Already we have found another one against uh, Dokken with a pure fighting deck. So this will be interesting to say the least, wondering uh, what all fighting types my opponent is running. And yes, I would like to go first. Unfortunately, we will get hit for weakness, and I start off with Kartana. Now, Kartana is not... Yeah, you do not want to start with Kartana, because you want to play that down to discard a special energy, especially against a fighting deck where strong energy will be able to get you... Well, will be able to... Uh, your opponent will be able to hit you for a little bit extra damage, so that's not necessarily... Yeah, you want to save that just to play it down, and also Kartana's late game, too, for the Blade GX, just to be able to take a prize. So, okay. So my opponent's running Buzzwool, Carbink, and Machop, so it looks like just kind of a hodgepodge fighting deck. I think I'm going to hold on to the Choice Band for now. Save that for later. I get a Celesteela, which... I think I do want to play the Choice Band onto, and I'm just going to end my turn right to there, I believe. I always have the opportunity, uh, I'll always have the opportunity to put Kartana back in the deck with its attack. I don't think I've actually ever attacked with Kartana before, so that'll be interesting. Uh, <laughs> I'll be able to use Kartana's attack to put it back into the deck. Uh, my opponent does just Jet Punch with Buzzwool, and let's start powering up the Celesteela. And maybe I can hit a couple, hit like some other stuff. And I get, okay, so this is something I can kind of work with. Ooh, and I even get the Psychic Memory. So let's discard both of the metal to, I think, grab a Rangru or Lele. I think just grab Lele, because while I could try to go, I, like, could, I could fish for a Max Elixir. I think it's better just to get the Lele in my hand. And then have a supporter for next turn. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I like the choice band being on Celesteela. And I'm going to hold off on playing the Psychic Memory for now. Because I don't want my opponent feel blowing that away. That'll be my uh, that'll be my way of one-shotting Buzzwool. If I'm able to get that up and get Silvali attacking. Unfortunately, because I attach the energy to Celesteela. I'm going to need to hit a Max Elixir off of this. Otherwise, I'm just going to evolve into Silvali and unfortunately can't Max Elixir onto that thing. So this is looking... Yeah, this is not looking good. It looks like my opponent's... I mean, Buzzwool is just applying early pressure. Like, it, that's what it does. And I get a DCE. So the question is, do I want to attack with Silvali or do I want to just power up Celesteela and try to attack with it? I think I just want to start hitting with Celesteela so that way I can get damage onto the board. I mean, I could... I mean, either way, I'd be able to... Ah, crap, okay. So let's get another Type Null down. 
Um, let's actually get Registeel down and then Max Elixir, see if we can hit that. That'd be very helpful. Yes, I do. And I can put it on to... Okay, so what I was going to say is I could have put it on to Celesteela and one-shotted this Buzzwool, but I will be able to uh, Rocket Fall him for a two-hit KO, and then I can use uh, Registeel to start powering up stuff in the background. So, again, I could have taken the Oko with my GX attack on Buzzwool with Celesteela right there, but I, I don't know. I just kind of felt like I would rather... Never mind. All right, so definitely bad play. I mean, I'm, I'm regretting that play already. Uh, really should have just max elixired onto the Celesteela, but I wanted to get energy onto Registeel so that I would be able to power up, so I would be able to attack in. Yeah, now Buzzwool gets a... St okay, so that was very, very bad play on my part. I should have just max elixired onto the Celesteela because I still would have had two energy on it. I could have just manually attached and continued to rocket fall, hit my opponent for good damage, and then uh, the Buzzwool would be gone, but nope, he is... Going to have a Buzzwool that I am unable to Oko from this range, and Celesteela is going down, so my opponent is up two prizes already, and this is, yeah, that was, that honestly, like, that was just a horrible play. That was a very horrible play. Um, what I can do, if I hit this Max Elixir, I can actually attack with Kartana, shuffle that back into my deck. Crap. So I don't get that. Let's try to start powering up Silvali, I guess. Uh, yeah, let's just turbo arm and go from there. This is not looking particularly good. Yeah, I'm behind. That That misplay with Celesteela really, really set me back. Because now he has a Buzzwool with 3 energy. And I'm the one that is trying to build up stuff in the background while already down 2 prizes. So, definite misplay on my part. Should have just attached to Celesteela and then GX attacked my way through the Buzzwool. But unfortunately, misplays like that do happen, and I'm going to try my best to come back from that. And my opponent even is playing Pokemon Center Lady, so my opponent's clearly not playing like a meta deck by any means. But regardless, I mean, that's the power of Buzzwool. It in itself causes problems, and I don't want to put Silvali up right now just because that's, I mean, it's it's in danger. So, uh, yeah, he is just going to keep racking up damage on Kartana. Um, ah, crap. What do I do? I think I might just want to try to bring up the Machoke. Bring up the Machoke and then Turbo Arm it again. So let's do that. Bring up the Kartana. And then just go back into Registeel and Turbo Arm it. Hopefully... Well, what this also does is if he evolves into Machamp GX, I don't remember if Machamp has 240 or 250. I'm leaning towards 250. What this does is it puts Machamp GX in range of being knocked out by Turbo Drive from Silvali super effectively. So it's in one hit KO range. Buzzwool, I can always just Guzma up this coming turn and knock that thing out. If my opponent has a Guzma, then I pretty much just lose because that means all my turns of trying to get stuff set up uh, just will be for nothing and my opponent will be down to two prizes with a fully loaded buzzwool that I cannot respond to. So he gets the switch into his buzzwool, which, okay, he can knock out my Registeel, but I will be able to immediately go into Silvali and knock out this buzzwool. Yes, Machamp has the ability to potentially just one-shot me back if my opponent's able to evolve into Machamp and attack my Silvali, but... Yeah, let's go into my Silvali right now and go straight for the Turbo Drive. I mean, I, again, because my opponent... Well, I guess not again. Uh, kind of like in the first game. Because my opponent is not playing... Well, is playing a bunch of non-EXs, I want to save my GX attack, actually, for my Kartana so that I'm able to just late game come in and grab that one prize that I need in order to take home the game. So now we're tied... I have a Silvali that's powered up. Unfortunately, he's going to be able to get a hit off on me with his Machoke, and this is going to do this is going to do quite a bit of damage. Um, if he's able to get Submission, he might be able to knock me out. If he's able to draw into an Energy and attach it to Machoke, I think he's I think he might be able to knock me out. But I'm also really glad that I have that 30 damage on because Karate Chop will actually be doing much less damage, and he gets a Buzzwool. Um, ah, that's awful. That is really bad that he got rid of my psychic memory. Because what I could have done this next turn is just Guzmaed up the Buzzwool and knocked it out with Silvali. 
but unfortunately that's just not something I can do. Uh, Kartana is almost in range of being sniped by Jet Punch, so I have to be very careful about that. I'm probably actually going to attack with Kartana at some point in this game to shuffle it back into the deck. That way I can just reset all of the damage on it. And he does just Karate Chop. Luckily only hits me for 100 and not 160 because now I'm out of range of Jet Punch from Buzzwell, so I'm able to take my knockout while still getting energy. And here's the question. So I have a Celesteela that I 100% want to play down. Turbo Drive is not going to net me anything. Do I want to bring up my opponent's Buzzwool, knock it out with Rebel GX? I mean, it'd waste my GX attack. I think that might actually be what I want to do. I mean, Turbo Drive's not going to get me anything, and crap, what do I do in this situation? I could take the knockout on Machoke, keep him from being able to have a Machamp, but uh, I don't know, because I really, really want to save that GX attack, so I think I'm just going to keep from having to uh, deal with a Machamp and just knock out the Machoke. I mean, Buzzwool comes in, it cannot one-shot me. And I'll still be able to get a hit off with Silvali while still retaining my GX attack. So that's kind of what I wanted to save right there. I mean, okay, he gets the strong energy. It's going to be able to hit me for 100 more damage. But at the same time, I will be... I will still have... Uh, I will still have my Silvali alive. So at the very least, Silvali is going to be alive. I'm going to be able to hit this Buzzwell for 120 damage. And I can just... I can just make whatever play I need to. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to knock him out with a Rebel GX unless he plays something else down. But at the same time, I am starting to pull ahead, and he gets... Ah, that's annoying. He gets the Bursting Balloon, so I can't just attack. Otherwise, I will go down. Uh, he does snipe the Registeel. Well, that gives Kartana one more turn. That gives Kartana another turn of living. If he had sniped it right there, I would have been in a really bad spot. But luckily, Kartana is still alive at this point. Let's Ultra Ball grab an Oranguru. Um, there is one more Psychic Memory in there, so I kind of want to fish for that. I, Man, this is where I this is where I kind of wish I'd played Field Blower earlier, but at the same time, uh, there's almost... I mean, it, it, I'd end up doing the same thing. I'm going to get rid of my opponent's Bursting Balloon for sure, because that means Silvalli lives through the turn and he has to attack, but I also kind of wanted to get rid of the uh, Scorched Earth, which unfortunately I'm not able to do. And there is an energy in the discard pile for Turbo Drive. I can attach the Choice Band and knock out my opponent's Buzzwool. Um, first things first, let's go ahead and Max Elixir, see if we can hit it. Yes, we do, luckily. So I'm going to throw that, actually, I think onto Kartana. Hmm, don't want to do that. Yeah, so not going to lie, because my opponent did not put the damage on Kartana and chose to knock out my Registeel, I'm able to, I'm actually able to live through this turn. So he has to have a Guzma. If he has a Guzma and brings up my Kartana and is able to switch out, then I just lose because he can snipe my Silvali and Kartana will go down to a strong energy. So get a DCE as well. Let's go ahead and put that on the... Celesteela, actually. And then let's Turbo Drive, hit the Buzzwool for 150, and then get an energy somewhere. I think I'm just going to put it right on the Celesteela, because that thing has 200 HP, and it's not going down anytime soon. But what I was saying, if my opponent hadn't taken the knockout on my Registeel and instead had put the damage on Kartana, I lost this turn. In fact, I would have had to have attacked with my Kartana just so I could get that damage off the board to where he couldn't just jet punch me for the win. So that uh, slight misplay by my opponent, I mean, I guess it's kind of, we both made misplays. I made misplay. I made a misplay early on with my Celesteela. He made a misplay right there by sniping uh, something just for one prize when had he just put it on Kartana, he had the win this turn. So, I mean, both of us are making misplays here and there, uh, but my Silvali is gonna go down and I actually will live this turn. Um, he go, he gets the Kartana, which is kind of spoopy. And, okay, so let's go into the Kartana. And then I think I just have to end and pray that I draw into an energy. Because if I draw into an energy, I'm actually in an amazing spot. Because then that gets all the damage off the board. 
and I'm pretty sure he does not have a way to Okomi, and I do luckily draw into an energy. That is phenomenal. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise I would have just been in fear of Buzzwool. So let's go ahead and attach the energy onto Kartana. Uh, Rescue Stretcher. What do I want to grab? Uh, let's just grab a Lele. Let's grab Lele so that I have an out for another supporter if my opponent ends me and I'm low and don't have the cards that I need. So yeah, let's just go ahead and do that. And what this also allows me to do well, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and Gale Blade, knock out the Buzzwell while shuffling, shuffling Kartana back into my deck. But if I get an energy and... Oh, wow, that was loud. If I get an energy and Kartana this next turn, I win because I will be able to use the GX attack that I saved up in order to take my final prize. So that is why I was waiting so long to uh, play my energy, is just because I wanted to be able to take that final prize with Kartana. I wanted to have that option. Uh, that way I wouldn't have to try to go through like a Machamp or something like that. Promoting my Celesteela because it has the most HP. Uh, okay, Silvali does too, but Sil uh, Celesteela also has free retreat, so that is nice as well. And there we go. So we are able to luckily take home the game in the end. Another play I could have made was to Lele for a Sycamore to get a fresh hand and hopefully draw into a Psychic Memory, which would have allowed me to Oko a lot of his mods. It wouldn't have been able to Oko the Machamp GX. But I would have okoed anything else, and on odds are, like if it came back into my turn and I couldn't just oko what was right in front of me, I would have ultra balled into the Kartana and tried to make that play uh, in order to win the game off of just using my GX attack. So, uh, yeah, that is the deck, guys. I think I'm gonna end it there. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Be on the lookout for the next parts of Sil Volley Week, quote unquote. And this is Sticks signing out. Why not? See you guys.